Albrecht Dürer is without a doubt one of the greatest artists of the German Renaissance and is ranked among the top old masters of the Northern Renaissance. In addition to painting, Dürer was skilled in printing and much of his work is a singular mix of northern attention to detail combined with Italian humanism and decennial. In his extensive corpus of work, Duda utilised engravings, his preferred method in later prints, along with watercolours, books, altarpieces and portraits, these of course including both self-portraits and portraits of others. His three Meister Sticke or Master Prints, Night, Death and the Devil, Saint Jerome in his Study and Melancholia I are among his best known engravings. He was also one of the earliest landscape painters in Europe, and his woodcuts evolved the potential of the medium. Albrecht Dürer was born on May 21st, 1471, in the Holy Roman Empire's free imperial city of Nuremberg, in today's modern Germany. Dürer was the second son and third child of Barbara Holper and Albrecht Dürer the Elder, who wed in 1467 and had an astounding 18 children together. Albrecht Dürer the Elder, a renowned goldsmith, relocated from Aitos, near Jula in modern-day Hungary, to Nuremberg in about 1455. Amongst his siblings, Albrecht had a younger brother named Hans Dura, who was also a painter and was the court painter for King Sigismund I the Old of Poland. Dura's father taught him the fundamentals of goldsmithing and sketching after he had attended school for several years. Dura saw such a prodigious ability for sketching that in 1486, at the age of 15, he began working as an apprentice for Michael Wolgemuth, a German painter and printmaker who ran a workshop in Nuremberg, even though his father intended him to continue his study as a goldsmith. According to Guild Protocol, Duda spent four years abroad after finishing his apprenticeship in 1490. This was in accordance with the customary German practice of taking von der Jahre, in which the apprentice learnt from artists in various regions over a period of four years. In 1494, Duda returned to Nuremberg, and on July 7th, 1494, at the age of 23, Duda married Agnes Frey in accordance with an arrangement devised while he was away. Agnes was the daughter of a well-known city brass worker, but the marriage was not a happy one, as shown by Duda's letters to his close friend Willibald Perkheimer, in which he made exceedingly crude comments about his wife. Duda had a laundry list of offensive comments he called his wife, including calling her, quote, an old crow. Perkheimer was also similar in his open dislike of Agnes, calling her a miserly shrew with a poisonous tongue who contributed to Duda's early demise. <laughs> Due to the frequent occurrence of homoerotic motifs in his works, such as in the men's bath, and the character of his contact with intimate friends, several academics have hypothesized that Albrecht was bisexual or even homosexual. Within three months of his marriage, Duda left for Italy, alone, perhaps stimulated by an outbreak of plague in Nuremberg. He made pit stops at Venice, Mantua, Padua, Cremona and other destinations, becoming the first German artist to pursue artistic construction in Italy, as opposed to the Netherlands and one of the first Northern Renaissance painters to acquire the concepts of the Italian Renaissance in its birthplace in Italy. He produced a great deal of landscape and nature studies while travelling, the results of which may be seen at the Albertina in Vienna, the Kunstanlungen in Dresden, and the Kupferstick Cabinet in Berlin. His subsequent watercolours, A Young Hare and A Great Piece of Turf, were both based on the studies he completed while travelling. Duda founded a workshop in Nuremberg after returning from his Wunder in Italy in 1495. At the time, he was just 24 years old, but the workshop quickly developed a solid reputation for the calibre of his work. A few years later, around 1500, his Christ-like self-portrait, which is arguably his most well-known piece, was created. Great Piece of Turf was finished by Dura in his Nuremberg workshop in 1503. It is a masterfully staged photograph of what appears to be an arbitrary collection of wild flora, but is really one of his most realistic nature studies, and was probably inspired by his careful study of nature. In the Great Piece of Turf, there are many plants, these including Coxfoot, Creeping Bent, Daisy, Dandelion, Greater Plantain, Hands Tongue, Meadow Grass, and Yarrow. It is a well-planned, perpetual, inextricably linked slice of nature that combines botanical disorder and disorganization with the fine details of each individual plant, all accentuated for maximum impact on a plain background. We may see something similar in a printed depiction, but Dura captures the distinctive truth of every blade and stem, every leaf and every bloom of every species, and although each plant is easily recognized, the picture nevertheless looks like a tangle of live undergrowth. Albrecht Dura passed away on the 6th of April 1528 
in Nuremberg at the age of 56, leaving behind a sizeable estate with a value of 6,874 florins, a substantial amount during that time. Dulder was subsequently buried in the Johannes Friedhof Cemetery in a substantial home where his workshop was housed and where his much-hated widow resided until her passing in 1539 was acquired from the heirs of the astronomer Bernhard Walter in 1509 and is still a well-known Nuremberg landmark till this day. Today, great piece of turf is now on display in the Albertina Museum in Vienna, Austria. This has been Made Jack, and please, after watching this video, go touch some grass.